everyone. Okay, so a lot of you probably thought that I was going to write a story because I kind of spread that rumor about, but I changed it last minute. So I drew a picture to go along with each lesson that I found in the Crucible, and I'm going to talk about it. Some of them have a song that go along with them, so just bear with me here. This first one I did, um, if you can't tell, it's supposed to be John Proctor, it's supposed to be kind of like a silhouette of him. And the first lesson I found was something along the lines of are difficult or chaotic situations bring change in a person. And the song that I have to go along with this is called Change by Jack Johnson and I'm going to play a little bit of it. Okay, so there's a lot more to that song, but I want to I don't want to stretch it out too much. But basically, I could compare this to The Crucible because John Proctor, he was used to this place, he was used to these bones and the normal changes. So he was used to the normal everyday life of Salem, and then all this madness starts with the people Abigail and her group of girls accusing everyone of being witches left and right. He thought that he could trust all the faces, but truthfully, a lot of people were just liars. And it gets stranger day by day is a lyric that actually plays later in the song. So yeah, it gets stranger day by day. In other words, chaos, all of this chaos with the witches, it made John Proctor into a better person. So change is the result of hard times. And uh, I mean, it ultimately resulted in his death, but before he died, he was considered a, get a better person. So he didn't die as a bad person. And we can relate that today because people go through hard times all the time. I mean, whether it's at home or at school, you could go through a really bad test and you just flunked it and you did absolutely terrible. But you're going to come out of that knowing, hey, I should study next time. So you're going to be a better person. So that was number one. Number two is sometimes sacrifices need to be made for the greater good. I don't have a song for this one, but I did draw that. Uh, it's the noose and sacrifice and there's a cross. Uh, this one also has to go along with John Proctor. He let himself be hung because he would not allow himself to... He wouldn't be able to live with himself anyways if he accused all of his friends of being witches when he knew that they weren't. And he wasn't going to say that he, he had tangled with witchcraft because he didn't want to be like that. He didn't want to be known as that kind of person. So instead of saying this huge lie, he went off and allowed himself to be hung. So sacrifices sometimes need to be made for the greater good. You can compare that today to today because maybe you go home and you're just absolutely tired from the school day. You just want to lay around, play video games, listen to music, whatever you do. But instead, you know, you have this pile of homework. You have this huge exam tomorrow you have to study for. So you make a sacrifice of your free time for the greater good of your grades. And there's a lot of other things you can compare it to. But because I'm at school, most of the things I'm going to compare it to relate to school. Third one is jealousy can be blinding. So she has the... That's supposed to be Abigail, if you can't tell, when her hair was down. 
And this one, the song that I have to go along with this is called Fort Knox by Goldfish. I, I doubt many people have heard this song, but... And it's kind of hard to get from the lyrics, Jealousy, but I'll explain it after I play a little bit of the song. So yeah, that was the song. I really like that song, it's a nice one to dance to. Uh, <laughs> but the lyrics in this song, kind of hard to get jealousy from it, but I was able to think about it enough. Um, and it relates more to the story and when jealousy was overall an overall kind of theme for it. But the something brewing in the sky, you know, the witchcraft rumors going around through the people. Too much distance separating you and I. Abigail's like, don't let anyone get between us, John. It's me and you forever. She wants to be with him, and she doesn't want anyone getting in the way. <laughs> I know that's treason. I thought I could kind of compare that to the whole adultery thing going on between Abigail and John, because that was basically treason. And then, I'm shaking and I'm moving all because of you. So Ab Abigail is freaking out, going kind of insane, all because she wants John Proctor. And so jealousy can lead you to do things that you might not originally intend to do. And we can compare that to today because I'm sure a lot of you have done something stupid because you were jealous. So. And the fourth one. People who are heroes aren't always as heroic as they seem. So. I was going to draw a person standing like this with a cape behind them, but I couldn't quite get the pose down, so I drew an H, and his shadow has the whole like devil horns and the tail going on. So I don't have a song for this one either, but I can compare this to John Hale, because he came into town, and everyone thought he was going to be the hero. He was going to save the town from, witch from witchcraft. But everyone thought he was going to be able to spot every witch, because he was apparently the which expert he could tell all the signs really he wasn't he wasn't really i mean he might have claimed to think that oh let me look behind your ear let me smell your hand or whatever weird thing he did <laughs> that's not going to figure out if you're a witch or not and so everyone thought he was going to save the town and he kind of had the intention of saving people but really he ended up condemning a lot of people to the noose, to being hung. So, if they seem like a hero, they're not always as heroic as they may seem. So maybe you look up to your parents as the hero figure in your life, I mean, and then they do something that you wouldn't really look up to in a person, so they're not as heroic as they seem. The fifth one is follow your heart, be true to yourself. And this one, I actually have a song. It's called Blue Lips by Regina Spector. And I'm gonna have to actually skip ahead a little bit, so hold on. Not that one. He smiled a rose and began
So this one is stay true to your heart, stay true to yourself. Don't cave in or do something you wouldn't do just because of some other people's influence. And this one, the lyrics of this of that part, I had to skip ahead a little bit because the the first few lyrics that play don't really go along with it as well. But when it says he took a step but then felt tired. He said, I'll rest a little while. I could compare that to when John Proctor, he actually takes a step up and he tries to go against Abby and he instead he gets thrown in jail. And I can take that to, he tried to take a step but then he got thrown in jail, he felt tired, he rested a little while, he had time to think. And when he tried to walk again, he wasn't a child. So when he tried to walk again, when he tried, when he was pulled out and said, you can confess to being a witch, you can uh, confess to performing witchcraft and you won't be hung, you'll get to go see your family. But he didn't choose to take the easy way out. He didn't choose to be a child. He stood up for himself, he became a better person all in all, and he wasn't going to accuse his friends. And uh, yeah, so he chose to die instead of accusing all of his friends. So trust your heart, stay true to yourself. I mean, I guess you could compare that to peer pressure. I mean, maybe your friends are all like, hey, I don't really want to go to the next class. There's a substitute I really hate. We should all go skip. I mean, you wouldn't, maybe you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that normally, but your friends want you to, and you don't give in to that. You stay true to yourself. You follow your heart. The sixth one, the final one, is fear. Your fears will eat you alive. So yeah, that fear. <laughs> I have a song for this one too. So I could probably play that entire song and compare the entire song to it, but I'll go ahead and compare what was said already. So, your fears will eat you alive. Run away, buy yourself another day. Abby is trying to run because she's going to get in trouble. After a bit, she realizes that she's in trouble. No matter what she does, she's going to get in trouble for accusing all these people of being witches. And she wants to run away with John Proctor, so she comes up and she's all like, Don't fret, my dear, it'll all be over soon. I'll be waiting here for you. I'm not sure if those lyrics played or not, but they're definitely in the song. So he's, she's kind of saying, Don't worry, it'll all be okay. You can come with me and we'll run away. And so her fears, Abby's fears of being caught, are kind of snowballing and she's just freaking out. She doesn't really know what to do so she's just running away. And uh, run as fast as you can, no one has to understand. So when she runs away, she's just like, okay, I'm leaving, I don't want to get in trouble, no one has to understand why, no one will ever know. So your fears will eat you alive. And that can be compared to today because maybe you woke up one morning late for school, you have this huge test again next next period and you didn't study. Maybe your fears would drive you to cheat or just skip the class altogether and do it another day. So yes, that is my presentation. Hey, can you tell me, did you draw each one of those? Yeah, each one. And what program did you use? Because I know the digital is digital art. I used this program called Paint Tool Sai. Okay. S-A-I. Can you scroll back through those pictures one more time? Yeah. I think it means so much more when we know that you drew each one of those. I tried doing a different style with each one. Right. Well, I don't. Can you explain that briefly? 
your different styles? Oh, well, yeah, I use different brushes and different techniques to, I mean, right here, there's a silhouette thing. I mean, it's not as realistic as I had planned, but the whole, like, brush stroke technique right here, that was a different style than this one, which is a lot cleaner, but it also has that kind of spooky feeling to it. This one, I used a different brush. I really like this one, actually, because I used it to shade and make it all wispy and creepy looking, kind of. This one's kind of more cartoony. I used plain flat colors. Mm. This one, I, I kind of, the background kind of reminds me of like a comic book kind of feel. So that's what I went with. And then the coloring is kind of simple. And then this one, I can't remember where I saw the style. I think it was on an, a music album somewhere. But I really liked the style and I thought it would really fit for the whole fear lesson. And one last question, when did you actually start? Because I know you emailed me and you talked about just changing gears. I started drawing all of this and planning it all out last night at 5.15. And that was after you had gotten into your short story and it just went nowhere, right? Yeah. All right, so let's give her a big hand. Uh